The Bombay Dock Explosion of 1944 stands as one of the most devastating incidents in the history of India. Taking place during World War II, this catastrophic event resulted in widespread destruction, loss of life, and long-lasting impacts on the city of Bombay, now Mumbai. This video delves into the circumstances surrounding the explosion, examines its immediate and long-term effects, and discusses the lessons learned from this tragic incident. To understand the magnitude of the incident, it is important to examine the historical context of the time. During World War II, Bombay played a crucial role as a major port and transportation hub, supporting the war efforts of the British Empire. A sprawling dock, teeming with activity and laden with secrets, ships of all shapes and sizes jostled for space, their cargoes concealed within their steel hulls. Amidst the hustle and bustle, a British freighter ship named the SS Fort Stikhein quietly made its entrance. Little did the unsuspecting crew and residents of Bombay know that this unassuming vessel carried a sinister payload. Fort Stikhein was a 7,000-plus ton British freighter that was built in Canada in 1942 during World War II. She was operated under the management of the Portline Cargo Shipping Company. The ship started its journey from Birkenhead on 24 February, via Gibraltar, Port Said, and Karachi, when she arrived at Bombay on 12 April 1944. Having taken on a pilot shortly before 10 a.m. she was safely maneuvered at the Victoria Dock at midday. The practice of flying a red flag to signify dangerous cargo on board had been discontinued in wartime as doing so would identify such vessels in the event of an enemy air raid on a port. The practice of unloading such vessels into lighters offshore had also been discontinued due to the war. At the time her cargo included 1,395 tons of explosives including 238 tons of sensitive explosives that were graded Category A, as the most dangerous. These were only allowed to be offloaded onto lighters, and not directly to the quayside. She also carried Supermarine Spitfire fighter aircraft, 87,000 bales of raw cotton, barrels of oil, timber, scrap iron, and approximately 890,000 pounds, or $51 million accounting for inflation worth of gold bullion in bars in 31 crates. The ship's captain, Alexander Naismith, who lost his life in the explosion, described the cargo as just about everything that will either burn or blow up. The unloading of the ship kicked off with the flow of lubricating oil, swiftly followed by the fish manure. To handle this important task, an extra team of dock workers was brought in, working tirelessly throughout the night of the 13th to the 14th of April. As the clock struck midday on April 13th, lighters sailed in to collect the explosive cargo. It was also at this time that engine repairs began, leaving the ship immobile and reliant on external help. At precisely 12.30 p.m., the sharp-eyed chief officer of Fort Crevier noticed smoke seeping out from the ventilators of Stickine's No. 2 hold. Although everyone assumed things were under control, the unexpected took place. The alarm wasn't raised until 1.45 p.m., catching everyone by surprise. In the mid-afternoon around 2 p.m., the crew was alerted to a fire on board burning somewhere in the number 2 hold. The fire pump in the ship's engine room was started and the firefighting operation began. With crew members and other dock workers abandoning the ship, it was realized by the dock authorities that there was a problem on board the ship. The fire crew was sent on board and an order was given for more fire engines to be sent for. Due to difficulties in contacting the fire control center, initially, only two engines were sent. Those on board the ship were unable to discover the seat of the fire and water was poured blindly into the hold. With the arrival of the two fire appliances, there were now 11 hoses in use. Captain Oberst, the officer in charge of the explosives arrived a few minutes later to assess the situation. A meeting was held on board between the ship's officers, Oberst, and Commander Longmore of the Royal Indian Navy, the chief salvage officer in Bombay. Captain Oberst stated that the ship had explosives equivalent to 150 blockbuster bombs. A blockbuster bomb was one of several of the largest conventional bombs used in World War II by the Royal Air Force, on board and that it should be sunk immediately. The captain expressed his concern, suggesting that flooding the boiler room and engine room might be a viable solution. However, he remained skeptical about the ship sinking due to the shallow depth of the dock. Within hold number one, a dangerous stockpile of sulfur and detonators lurked, adding to the growing peril. By 1445, the bulkhead separating holds No. 1 and No. 2 had grown alarmingly hot. Terrifying echoes of ammunition exploding in No. 2 reached the ears of those trapped in No. 1. At 2.50 p.m., Colonel Sadler, 
the esteemed general manager of the docks at Bombay, arrived on the scene. He proposed that Fort Stickine should be promptly removed from the dock, a challenging task that would require the assistance of tugs due to the ship's incapacitated state. A heated argument ensued, culminating in Colonel Sadler's grim parting words. The ship was likely to explode before any attempt to take her out of the port could be made. By now there were three conflicting points of view existed on board. Captain Naismith wanted to save his ship, Colonel Sadler his docks, and Coombs wanted the Fort Stickine to stay where it was, so that his crew could concentrate on extinguishing the fire. Amid the relentless firefighting efforts, a horrifying turn of events unfolded. It was 3.50 p.m. when a menacing flame erupted from the depths of the hold, surging skyward, surpassing even the height of the ship's mast. Panic ensued as the command to abandon ship echoed through the air. Some daringly leapt from the vessel onto the quayside, while others plunged into the treacherous waters below. Then, at 4.06 p.m., a cataclysmic explosion shook the ship to its core. The once proud vessel was violently torn asunder, the sheer force of the blast shattering windows over a staggering distance of 12 kilometers, 7.5 miles. In a horrifying twist, the ship's boiler was found a half mile, 800 meters, away from the wreckage. The impact generated a monstrous tsunami within the confines of the dock, leaving its destructive mark as it forcefully deposited another vessel onto the quayside. But the nightmare was far from over. At 1633, a second explosion rocked the surroundings, unleashing a devastating force that ripped off the stern of Halapama, a nearby cargo ship. The detached section soared through the air, crashing down a chilling 200 yards, 180 meters, away as if the very fabric of reality had been twisted and shattered by the horrifying power at play. The blast was recorded by seismographs at the Kalaba Observatory in the city. Sensors recorded that the earth trembled at Shimla, a city over 1,700 kilometers away. A horrifying spectacle unfolded as burning debris, including blazing cotton bales, rained down from the heavens upon the docked ships, the bustling dockyard, and the humble slum areas beyond the harbor. In a shocking arc spanning 800 meters, 870 yards, an area covering around 2 square kilometers, 0.77 square miles, was engulfed in relentless flames. The destructive reach was relentless. The devastating impact didn't end there. Eleven neighboring vessels, caught in the grip of chaos, either succumbed to the depths or teetered on the brink of sinking. The valiant emergency personnel stationed at the scene faced heavy casualties, their heroic efforts battling against overwhelming odds. The terrifying explosions reverberated with an eerie echo, reaching ears as far as 80 kilometers, 50 miles, away. The heart-wrenching truth dawned upon all as the blast and ensuing inferno ravaged some of Bombay's most prosperous and vital areas. In a tragic instant, the face of the city was forever changed, consumed by the merciless fury unleashed by the calamity. The total number of lives lost in the explosion is estimated at more than 800, some estimates put the figure around 1,300. More than 500 civilians lost their lives, many of them residing in adjoining slum areas, but as it was wartime, information about the full extent of the damage was partially censored. The results of the explosion are summarized as follows. 231 people killed were attached to various dock services including fire brigade and dock employees. Of them, 66 were firemen more than 2,500 were injured, including civilians 13 ships were lost and some other ships were heavily or partially damaged out of these. Three Royal Indian Navy ships were lost 31 wooden crates, each containing four gold bars, each gold bar weighing 800 troy ounces or almost 25 kilogram, which were all later recovered. More than 50,000 tons of shipping was destroyed and another 50,000 tons of shipping was damaged. Loss of more than 50,000 tons of food grains, including rice, which gave rise to black marketing of food grains afterward. The Commission of Enquiry later speculated that a dock worker could have climbed the ladder out of number one hold, gone through the bulkhead door, and descended into number two hold for a cigarette. The Bombay dock explosion of 1944 left an indelible mark on the history of Mumbai. The devastation and loss of life served as a stark reminder of the potential consequences of mishandling hazardous materials. The incident prompted significant changes in safety regulations, training programs, and emergency response systems. While the tragic events of 1944 can never be undone, the lessons learned from the Bombay dock explosion have helped shape policies and practices in the handling of hazardous materials and industrial safety.
The ongoing commitment to learning from such disasters serves as a testament to the resilience of communities and the determination to prevent similar tragedies in the future.